Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and we're looking at a 1993 Suzuki Jimny bought from auction here in Japan for export. We're going to take a look at the condition of the vehicle and compare it to the vehicle's inspection sheet. This one here with a 660cc turbocharged engine, four-wheel drive, of course, they all have that. Narrow body, as was the norm for the K-car versions. Actually, this is kind of interesting. You can get these as a K-car with a 60cc engine, 64 horsepower. That's an F6A engine. Or you can get them with a 1.3 liter engine here in Japan, the same as you could in the Samurai of North America. But the 1,000, uh, I'm sorry, the 1,300 cc version of it wasn't uh, limited to the size requirements of the K cars, and so you could get the overfenders on that. This is literally as big as a K car can be. Okay, back to the car here. Now the coolant is good, I opened it up, you can see it spilled out a little bit. The timing belt was changed in 2012 at 94,000 kilometers. I'd say 127,000 kilometers is quite low. What is that in miles? Somewhere around 80,000 maybe? Okay, everything in here looks stock. The engine has actually had a little bit of work done to it, uh, like rebuild work. I'll talk about that in a second. Oh, and the battery tie-down strap is missing, so that battery is basically just loose in there. Okay, close that up, turn the engine off for now. I will show you that the engine does run quite nicely. Okay, switch that off for now. And we'll go over to the auction inspection sheet first. So this is all the information given to us before we bought the car from the auction. We have a kind of a mirror in the way, so let's just move that out of the way. Okay, so it's a 1993 Jimny 660cc engine, auction grade 3.5 with interior grade C. It's four-wheel drive, which is also selectable with a high gear ratio and a low gear ratio, or you can do two-wheel drive as well if you want. 127, 343 kilometers, automatic transmission in this. I'd say the automatic is probably a little bit rarer than the five-speed manual, but still fairly easy to get. Power steering, no power windows on this. It's crank style, kind of old school thing. Original navy blue color. Now I believe it's been repainted. The seller or the auction didn't mention that, but it does kind of have a look of a repainted car. It looks like we're running low on batteries, and so I'm sorry, we're gonna have to stitch this video together, which I'll do when I get back to the office. Notes here, in 2018, the head had the valves replaced. All valves were replaced in the head and a rebuilt turbo. The timing belt has been changed. The water pump has been changed. Various other history papers. The muffler has a crack in it, causing a leak, which I actually didn't hear. So I'm not sure where it is, but probably a repair is needed for that. And then aftermarket steering wheel. The report here says interior dirty, door mirror scratched and faded. There's actually a little bit of surface rust on the arms as well. Let's see if you can get that. There you go. Okay, seat ripped, AC doesn't work. Uh, aftermarket headliner, which, actually, which is actually just corrugated plastic. It's kind of a ghetto job, but you know, you can fix it if you want. It's completely flat roof liner, so you can put whatever you want up there. Left front cross member side section dented. Okay, bed section has scratches, dents, and modification holes in the interior liner. Aftermarket front and rear bumpers and wheels, underside surface rust. Okay, paint peeling at the top of both of these fenders. W2 for a repaint there. Y1 for a crack there. And then it says uh, various tiny little scratches, which almost none of them were visible, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'll just step back here and then I'll splice together. I'll put a new battery and then I'll splice here so that we can see the rest of the report uninterrupted. And we're back with the full battery. Okay, so... We have done that. Let's do a once around so you can see it from all different angles. You'll notice that the turbo versions of these have the hood duct on it and quite a nice looking hood duct too. And of course it is functional because it has that top mount intercooler. Okay, I'm not 100% sure that it is faded paint. It, I, I'm sorry, not 100% not sure that it is a repainted paint. It does have that look to it. Sometimes original paint can look like a repaint too though. If you look at it, the hood is shinier than the rest. The hood was the only place that got a W2 on the auction report. Here we have a rear mount spare tire. You can see the aftermarket bumper with the integrated tail lights in it. Okay. We are selling these pretty consistently. They're basically the go-to 4x4 here in Japan. People think about Land Cruisers when they think of Japanese 4x4s. 
which is true, there are capable vehicles, but anyone who recreationally goes out and does 4 by 4 for fun, I'd say over 90% do the Jimny because it is cheap, very easy to get aftermarket part, very light, extremely short wheelbase, approach and departure angles are basically perfect. And if you bash it up, there's so many of them here in Japan that you can just buy whatever you need. Buy another one. You know, they were disposable. Prices are coming up a little bit, so I wouldn't really consider them to be disposable anymore. But what a great little vehicle. The only thing they're not really that good on is on-road manners. But if you can get past that, it is a very cool looking car, highly capable, and uh, really not that expensive for a fun little thing. Like if we didn't do car racing, that money could go into something like this and you could have a ton of fun with this, off-roading and splashing through puddles. Okay, looking at damages, the roof, or I'm sorry, the hood being repainted, you can see a little bit of the wave there. And if, I'm sorry, it is dirty at the moment. Uh, the cars can get dusty every now and then. The rest of the paint is looking good. There is some fade, I'll show you. There's peeling right here. This is the paint peeling that they were mentioning on the inspection sheet. And on the other side, although it's more like fade, it is larger. So fade I would usually consider to be less damaging than peeling, but in this case there's more fade than there is peeling on the other side. The front section here has, look at this, an actual metal grill. Kind of weird, you don't see that kind of thing anymore. 1993 doesn't seem that long ago, but I guess it was. It was uh, the year before Green Day popped off, which was 1994. Um, flex cracks in the paint there and there and here a little bit of fade right there and then the grill looks like it could use some paint it has some scratched off sections there and then some of the black paint is scratched off from the uh, the backing wire mesh okay there's a bit of surface rust on various things you can see the bolts there uh, for the most part the car is basically rust free the underside is looking really good and it can be hard to find one of these rust-free because they're made out of a very thin sheet metal. Does that sound thin? Actually, some scratches here that I missed before. I guess you could consider that to be paint fade because it's damaged paint. Okay, so uh, as far as rust goes, like there's some on the hinge there. And yes, external hinges. I love them. Any car with external hinges gets uh, a seal of approval from me. Actually, functional vents in the hood, giving you less lift at the front, which it's not a sports car, but, uh, you know, it makes things better on the highway. A little bit of rust right there, too. And on the other side here. The bumper's nice. It's cool that... It, I mean, it's pretty simple, but it's cool to have the integrated signals and the brake lights in the back. Go down the side, it's looking pretty good. We don't really have any large areas of damage. We've got a small dent here in the sill. Luckily, no rebuilt sections, no rust in there. You can see the frame in here is nice and tidy. Okay, it has a set of tires from 2006 that are basically done, so it's gonna need some new tires. And then uh, the exhaust has a smell of fuel that's been in there for, I don't know, over a year or so. Doesn't smell like anything's wrong with the engine. It just sounds it smells like fuel that's been in there for too long. Okay, this is where your license plate goes, which is weird. It's got graphics underneath it, and it says uh, 200 kilograms. Actually, this vehicle was registered as a commercial vehicle, so be careful. If you have a commercial vehicle and it's going to the states like this one, you need to do something special, or you're going to be dinged for 25% import tax instead of the regular 2.5. What you have to do is you have to petition to customs that because the seat, this car has four seats, it doesn't qualify as a truck, and therefore you can import it. If you have only two seats, 25%. Four seats, 2.5%. And so do make sure that you import it properly. Well, since we have this open, you can see this area here has a number of scratches. We got a bit of rust right here. Okay, the rest of that looks fine. Okay, missing some speakers. That's easy enough to fix if you want to. They're just built into the door cards though, so you're not gonna get great sound out of them. Pop that back into place there. Okay, the headliner, made out of the corrugated plastic. Uh, not my favorite modification, but it's not bad. It probably offers some sort of uh, sound deadening. And then these rear seats are pretty comical. Like, 
Who's going to be able to sit there? But I'm glad they exist. These seats will save you several hundred dollars in uh, importing costs. Otherwise, we could we could buy some seats here in Japan and install them. We've actually done that quite a few times for cars going to the states. You see, here in Japan, if you can, if you register the vehicle as a commercial vehicle, you save on road taxes and stuff, and it's actually a, not a small amount either. Um, per year, it's probably somewhere around five hundred, six hundred dollars. Cracking the tail light there, a little bit of rust on the tow hook. A guard for the fuel tank, that's nice. And yes, leaf suspension, front and rear, I think, on this. They changed over to springs in 94, 95. But this one is leaves, which is great if you want to lift it. Not that great if you want to lift it and still be comfortable. These uh, leaves are fairly thrashy, and if you lift it with just shackles or the... Uh, See, you can change the position of the axle. Oh, and yes, solid front axle, solid rear axle. Great. So see how the leaf is below the axle? You can actually switch that around. So you can have the axle below the leaf. It's fairly easy to do. And it'll give you, I don't know, three-ish inches of uh, extra suspension height. But you don't get any more articulation, which you really, it's hard to do with, with leaf springs, to be honest. This area here is scratched. Okay, or should I say it's easier to do with coil springs. Okay. And uh, seats. Okay, both seats have rips in them. They don't stand out an awful lot. These seats are fairly low profile and small. If you're a bigger person, the seats won't give you that much support. The rips here Pretty common place to rip because as you sit on this, it kind of buckles it, right? Got a rip here, and it's just the seam that's pulled, and so re-thread that and you're good. Got the exact same thing right here and here. Okay, and here's a look at that, uh, sorry, excuse for a rear seat. Or a plucky little rear, rear seat trying its best to fit into a world of more comfortable, larger rear seats. I'm doing the best that I can. It wasn't my choice that I got stuck in a Suzuki Jimny. Like the runt of the seat world. Okay, so we have some sun fade on the dashboard here and on the tops of the door cards. It's not so bad. It is an old car. You get what, I mean, you can kind of expect that. The steering wheel's in good shape, but all of the gloss finish is worn off of it. So it's now more like a matte, but that's not what it was meant to look like. Okay, if you, actually, if you look on the other side, you can see some of the gloss down here. Actually, maybe you can't because it's too dark. Uh, no floor mats. You can see there. The bottom of the glove box is broken off. It's actually just a thin... The way that it works is we have two plastic hinges here and here. Then the glove box is attached with some thin plastic that just bends at the thin section. And that thin section can snap like it has there. So the glove box still works if you don't mind it being a little bit weird and floppy. Let me just slide that back in. Or you can just tape along there with some tape. There's a screw hole here. I couldn't really find any of the other screw holes that they were talking about. Shifting is fine. Has an aftermarket CD player. Has been smoked in but doesn't smell like cigarettes inside. The nice thing about these is there's not a lot that, can, that cigarette smoke can seep into. And I believe that a ton of uh, Jimny owners, maybe even the majority, would be cigarette smokers here in Japan. It seems that kind of off-road type vehicles, Land Cruisers, High Aces, Delicas, Jimnys, they tend to have a high occurrence of cigarette smoking, unfortunately. Two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low. Don't run it too hot. Or put in an aftermarket oil temp cooler. Uh, I'm sorry, transmission oil cooler. We're going to get better at talking eventually. Okay. And uh, a little bit of sagginess in the seat. No problem. Looks like a pretty good little honest chimney. And uh, hopefully that engine with the turbo being rebuilt and the valves being replaced, it's going to run for a nice long time. Okay, so there you have it. As usual, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.